here today uh, only but by the grace of God. You know, I grew up, uh, I grew up uh, in the foster home in West Philly, and uh, very early age got involved in gangs, and uh, very early uh, was very encourageable in my community. And, uh, very early in my life, uh, I was destined for um, failure. My life changed uh, overnight. I ended up in Ohio in college. Uh, I was expelled from the Philadelphia school system, and then two years later, I enrolled in college. You know. But I took me with me my anger, my frustrations, my uh, lack of discipline, and uh, went on college campus and uh, performed. And uh, but I but. But by the grace of God, I matriculated. Um, I met a lot of good people, and I learned a lot of things. And I returned back to Philadelphia, and um, I got involved with uh, another world that I did not know of. And uh, it was uh, in the streets with a lot of alcoholism, a lot of other addictions and afflictions. and. Um, I was introduced to the shelter system. I was introduced to um, sleeping in subways, and park benches, and old bandominiums, and lifestyles uh, beyond what I ever thought I would be involved in. And, uh, but by the grace of God, I, I was able to uh, meet a lot of spiritual churches through the shelter system, through the, through the other systems. And uh, was able to uh, find some recovery. And um, I had my bouts with recovery, struggling. And then I re moved to New Jersey uh, with my struggles and in Camden, New Jersey. And uh, I was able to find the recovery again. And I was able to uh, be blessed. And, um, and I'm here today because of Proact. Uh, after numerous years of sobriety, I was, I'm coming out of. I, I went into retirement. I was fortunate to go into education. I was fortunate also to be a social worker. I, I didn't fail to uh, mention in Philadelphia for five years, and then I did social uh, teaching for about uh, between Ohio and Philadelphia in special education uh, for numerous years, about 11 years, and so I was able to go to uh, New Jersey, retire slash uh, just start a new life. So PROAC is my vehicle to come back into uh, working in the community. Uh, I'm involved in numerous fraternities. Uh, so I'm looking to use the fraternities as a vehicle slash the church. I'm involved in the various ministries, in a church in Blackwood, Genesis Ministry, uh, Food uh, Bank, and um, that's thriving. And, so I'm looking to come into Philadelphia and do some things uh, uh, through PROAC. And uh, so this storytelling is just one of the many venues that I'm looking to get involved in to uh, get back out there in, in the thresholds with the young members and let them know that they don't have to stay in no gangs to the older guys who, who have been hardened from uh, things that we have experienced, you know, whether it was through jails or whether it's still some institutions, that we're not less than a man to talk to other men about our issues and that, that, that God, there is a God, because a lot of us who are still left out here, it had to be a God because of the things we were involved in, uh, we still can stand. You don't always, if you can look up, you can get up, and I'm here to just, you know, since I, I don't have to look down, if I can look down, is to pull somebody up. So I'm trying to take my education, my experiences, and uh, come to storytelling, learn how to do this effectively, learn how to get some certificates to make presentations, presentations effectively, and, and just be uh, uh, to use my passion because it is to help people. So that's where I'm at. All right. We shall overcome. Deep in my heart, I do believe that 
I just wish that someday was now. I wish that my son could play on the segregated school grounds without the presence of armed guards lingering, without the sounds of bullets and gunshots being over his head and in his mind, but these are the signs of the times when our society finds war more rewarding than peace. When radio and TV screens seduce us constantly with catastrophes and react so maliciously when our children mimic and idolize what they see. Now you tell me, is this system designed this way, or am I thinking blindly when I say that it's time for change? And it may sound a little strange, but I think some folks have become comfortable with Satan, but I wish that I could call on the name of my Savior and he'd arrive to awaken this nation and extinguish the foul beasts that have run rampant through these streets and elected seats, targeting melanin again and again. See, the old song says that we shall overcome someday, so who am I to question time or the creator of mankind? I am only a womb man willing to stand my ground, willing to rise up the sweet fruit of the earth and work to empower my people. But see, my problem is that my eyes are see-through. So when I speak to my peoples, they can feel me. They can feel the energy that lays within me. So I can't camouflage my stride as I work to strengthen my spiritual side to awaken the, to awaken the spirit of those lost in the wind. Because there was a time when we'd stick together, willing and ready to do whatever to maintain our communities. What did they do to our unity? How did this system reroute our thoughts and make us feel comfortable with selling ourselves short under tables and behind closed doors while they build jail cells to house the minds of our little boys and girls? I'm tired of waiting for the day to come. I want us to overcome today, and I pray that you stop long enough to listen to the cries of this sister who wounds cries for the loss of so many lives and for that black brother who's trying to discover who he really is while he lives through years of uncertainty and darkness. Father, please shine your light on us and blow that spirit that our ancestors breathed. I so humbly breathe. I so humbly beg for a new regime. And one day, we'll have to change that. We shall overcome one day. And it, I forgot that part. That old, what's the name of the song? I just sung it. We, we shall, shall overcome someday. This was a, a, a older copy without that last portion. So I was trying to do that.